20 months, no games, no software, and a frustrating community. That's what I was promised. But what I got instead was my computer being fun again, a chance to learn, and a new outlook on the desktop experience. New apps that I would have never got a chance to use if it weren't for switching to Linux, and old software that for the most part just keeps working, games and all. I'm not an expert, but after 20 months of using Linux, I'm fairly confident that I can tell you about it and let you know what's good, what's bad, what's going on. The year of the Linux desktop may never come, but the slow and steady increase of people for which Linux is able to displace their current macOS and Windows install is already upon us. Linux keeps getting, like every day, a new game you want on ProtonDB goes gold, a new driver issue is fixed, a new app is released that means you can ditch your Windows alternative. And so I want you to understand what I mean when I use the word desperate in the next sentence. I do not mean that Microsoft is desperate. They are doing fine for money, Microsoft is all good. But their actions are starting to look it. Because it seems to me that Microsoft's desperate attempts to get you hooked into other parts of their ecosystem, whether it be Game Pass, the Microsoft Store, the forced edge usage, the forced sign-ins on Windows 11, that all seems like a stark realization that Windows is not the hook that it used to be. Windows being the OS that mostly runs it all isn't really so special anymore. Obviously, Windows is and for the foreseeable future will be the winner of the OS race. And that's not going to change, I don't think, for a very long time, if ever. But the amount of people for which Windows is the only viable option is going down. Windows is still the path of least resistance, and that's clearly what matters the most. Like, you know, Mac OS comes with Macs. Who actually used Bootcamp? Very few people. But it's still cool that Linux is constantly getting more and more capable, and companies like Valve are making sure that it won't stay niche forever. They're actually shipping devices with it pre-installed. It's been really cool seeing the amount of time I spend on my Linux SSD versus secondary Windows SATA slow SSD slowly shifting more to the Linux side. At the start of 2021, when I switched, there were most of the games I wanted to play didn't work, and there were just some weird desktop usability issues. Some something something pulse audio resampling audio was was making my sound crackle and stuff. It was really awkward. I spent like 20% of my time in it. After that, like the the next chapter, I'd say. Uh, game compatibility had gotten way better just because of updates, um, I had switched to Pipewire by this point, and I got more used to y being more of a hybrid GUI and terminal user. I still primarily use the GUI partially because I just like my computer to look nice, but the terminal, unlike in Windows, because PowerShell is abominable, is actually fairly well thought out, and it's good for certain tasks, and I have gotten used to what those tasks were. So by the start of 2022, a bit less than a year in, because I started a bit into 2021, by the, end, by the start of 2022, I was using Linux about 50% of the time. And then the next step was about a year after I first switched to Linux, a bit into the start of 2022. I switched to GNOME as my desktop environment, which was the bigger thing, but I also switched away from Arch to Fedora. And GNOME was the big experience changer. GNOME is by far the most polished looking and feeling desktop experience I've had on any operating system. And although the other things as well mattered a lot for me, it was nice not having to mess with my computer constantly or worry about updates breaking things like I was in Arch, GNOME was the big thing that made me go, Windows just feels old. I don't want to be there anymore. Like, th there is this alternative that just means existing with the computer turned on is much, much nicer. And so that made me go out and look for alternatives to Windows apps that I might have other just otherwise just been running in Wine or, or, or something like that. And then switching to Fedora helped me because Arch was really cool. I suggest that if you are actually wanting to just learn Linux and learn it well, jump right in with Arch. Things are going to go wrong, and it's going to be really frustrating, but it's going to force you to learn how to Linux. But now that I had that knowledge, Arch was becoming kind of a burden. I still needed something rolling release, because I've got an AMD GPU, I don't want to manually mess with changing my kernels, I just want the distro to handle that. But uh, so, I, so I couldn't go to something Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever. But Arch was just getting in the way. Too often things would break. And so Fedora was a nice middle ground. It used the modern technologies that I like, 
I like Wayland. Wayland has been a great experience for me. ButterFS, I like Pipewire. I like, so I like that Fedora picks those by default. It has sane defaults. There's not a lot that I have to strip out of it and the update cycle is pretty good. And so with all of that, with that new desktop experience, with the updated, the continuous updates Linux keeps getting, the, the better game compatibility, the better performance, new features and stuff, all of that means that right now, at the start of 2023, these notes were written like a month ago, but it's still relevant now. Linux is 80 to 95% of my computer usage, I'd say. I, like, I, I haven't tracked it hour-wise, but that, that seems about right. My games mostly work. My apps mostly work. The look and feel of it is so much better. My battery life is better on my laptop. And it's open source. Like, I really do not see any reason to go back. I also get the advantage of, if Windows was the preferred server operating system, which is kind of funny to imagine, then I would feel differently about this, because Windows is owned by Microsoft, it's proprietary. But there is a benefit, given that Linux is open source, to the fact that everything is much more homogenous now. You know, it, whether I'm on a Raspberry Pi, like a single board computer, or a server in the cloud, or my desktop in the middle, everything is functionally the same when, it, when I just go into a terminal. And so it means I can get much more familiar and I can use the things that I would use less often normally. Like I, I can talk to a server better because I'm talking to it in the same way that I would talk to my computer in a terminal. And speaking of servers, if you feel like subscribing, one of Google's is gonna get a web request. Does that work? How shoehorned does that feel? And the best part is that it's not just getting more feasible for techie people. Universal and safe packaging formats like Flatpak, uh, Linux Mint and its crazy user friendliness other than because they don't care about Wayland for um, people with touchscreen laptops, but it's mostly there, we're a minority anyway. Um, and just the sheer manpower that's going into making Linux work means that for a lot of people, like. If you gave a family member who uses their computer just a little bit, just web browsing and document editing, a 10 minute brief, you'd probably have them going on Linux just fine. To be clear, that's not a recommendation to just swap people's OS's to Linux. You see people, like, look it up. If you, if you don't believe me, you see Linux enthusiasts just switching people's computers without asking them. Don't do that. But still, the ease with which people can get into Linux is ever increasing. And so I do implore you, if you just take a cursory glance over the apps you use and you don't see any with just no Linux alternative or version, give it a try. If you're getting bored, here's a chance to look at the dog. Because what's coming next is my is the actual distro hopping experience I went through. I started at LTT's recommendation with Pop OS and it looked pretty good. It felt really responsive. Something about just, just moving the mouse and, and clicking icons, it felt really fast. I thought I would be a huge fan. And then I hit a seemingly unsolvable technical issue. I installed Steam, I tried to set it to a game drive, I could not. Looking back on that, it becomes painfully obvious to me what the problem was. I had installed the Flatpak version of Steam, which I'm pretty sure I didn't mess with anything in the pop shop, so I feel like the default was Flatpak Steam, which I think is a silly default because most people I imagine have their games on a drive that isn't their boot drive. But, but anyway, all I would actually have to do is run a fairly simple command to give Steam access to my game drive. But I didn't know that, and so I just kind of left Linux, because at that time, I was like, okay, I tried it, it's a cool experiment, I've had problems with Windows, but it's not like Windows isn't working for me, why waste time trying to make this work? But only about a month later, I had to give it another crack, because my Windows boot partition just disappeared. Like, I turned on the computer and it found no bootable drives. <laughs> um, that made me think, Windows does do that a lot, doesn't it? Not necessarily the boot partition going away, though that has happened to me more than once, but an issue me and my friend both had in common was that Windows would just boot to a black screen, and you had a cursor and you could control shift escape to get task manager, but we just couldn't figure out how to make it work. I think we ended up finding a solution, I forgot it now and it's not relevant anymore, but the point is, Windows would often work for quite a while and then break in some horrendous way that involved us having to reset our computers. And so I just wasn't happy with that anymore. So with that newfound encouragement, I tried Arch, which isn't quite true. I tried Manjaro for about an hour and then moved to Arch because 
I had heard about things Arch could do with this thing called the AUR, um, which was really cool while I was on Arch, but I also, I don't really need it anymore. But I'd heard about that, so I got Manjaro, and then I got things from the AUR, and they broke. And then I was like, I, I heard about Arch install scripts, so I just used one of those, down on Arch. You can complain that I used an install script, that's fine. That's up to you. It's not like using an install script saved me from any troubleshooting, it just saved me setup time. I still basically had to run through an Arch install myself in the future, but my first Arch install was an install script. You know, past that, vanilla Arch is not going to hold your hand, and it definitely didn't. But that trial by fire of Linux meant that, like I said earlier, Arch got me used to Linux. I got it. I still am not an expert, like I said at the start of this video, but I'm confident enough. And then Arch I stuck with for about a year. The only reason I switched away is because I couldn't keep being forced to mess with my computer. I still wanted to have the option, but I didn't want to feel forced into it, and that's what Arch was kind of turning into. Luckily by that point I'd learned what I needed to from Arch. It was a really helpful learning resource. The, the path I went down, if you really really want to learn and get used to it, go straight to Arch. It's really invaluable for that, and I, I hope to see others going down the same path. But, as I said, I needed something roll and release, I needed something still modern, Fedora goes right there, it's just a good distro. And I had switched to GNOME slightly before I went to Fedora, and so being still on GNOME was nice. I feel like for me it's just the most pragmatic of the OS choices. I could mold Arch into what I wanted it to be by only doing updates every month or so, and hoping that bugs had been sorted out by then, hoping I didn't get an unlucky update and I could check the Arch wiki and, and stuff like that. Or I could go to Debian and then manually install a newer kernel and things like that. Or I could just be on Fedora. <laughs> so let me know, do you use Linux? Have you considered it? Have you learned anything from this video? I just, I just want to hear from people, because it's been exciting. I'm a fan. Hopefully you've enjoyed, and bye.